Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of several Tudor history books and a self-confessed Tudor nut. Okay, well, where am I taking you today? Well, I'm actually taking you to a date in the Stuart period, but it concerns a Tudor person. On this day in in Tudor, well, I can't say Tudor history, on this day in history, 16th of November, 1612, Elizabethan conspirator William Stafford died. Now, it's not known where William Stafford died or where he was laid to rest, so I'm sorry you can't go and visit his grave today. But let me tell you a little bit about this man who you might not have ever heard of, uh, but he's an interesting man because he was involved in a plot. So let me tell you about him. William Stafford was the second son of William Stafford. They weren't very creative with their names. And that William Stafford, his father, was the widower of Mary Boleyn, who was, of course, the sister of Anne Boleyn. But William Stafford, the one that I'm talking about today, wasn't the son of Mary Boleyn. He was the son of Stafford's second wife, Dorothy, who in turn was the daughter of Henry Stafford, 10th Baron Stafford, and Ursula Pole. Now, our William Stafford had royal blood, being of the Plantagenet line through his maternal grandmother, Ursula Pole, who was the daughter of Margaret Pole, whose name you might recognise, Margaret Pole, Countess of Salisbury. And Ursula was also the granddaughter of George, Duke of Clarence, brother of Kings Edward IV and Richard III. So our William Stafford had royal Plantagenet blood. When little William was just one year old, his family had to flee England because Queen Mary I had come to the throne and she was Catholic and they were staunch Protestants and they chose to go into exile on the continent. During their time there in Geneva and then Basel, they knew John Calvin very well and lived next door as well at one point to John Knox. They returned to Essex in England in 1559 after the Protestant Elizabeth I came to the throne. William was educated at Winchester College and then New College, Oxford, where he was a fellow from 1573 to 1575. After that, he spent some time at the Royal Court in London before fighting on the side of the Dutch rebels against the Spanish and then living in Paris for a time with his brother Edward, who was acting as an ambassador there. But let's fast forward to the interesting stuff now, um, to January 1587 and the so-called Stafford plot, obviously named after William Stafford, who was seen as the main conspirator. Well, it was claimed that our William Stafford had plotted with Baron de Chateauneuf, the French ambassador, and the ambassador's secretary, de Trapp, to kill Elizabeth I. Um, also involved in the plot was Michael Moody, who was William's um, brother Edward's uh, servant. Um, Moody had apparently come up with the idea of assassinating the Queen in her bedchamber by way of laying a trail of gunpowder and obviously uh, setting it alight. This idea changed. Uh, they decided that perhaps it would be best to stab or poison uh, the Queen, perhaps with a poisoned saddle or gown, uh, when the French ambassador and his secretary pointed out that if they laid this trail of gunpowder to the Queen's bedchamber, then Dorothy Stafford, who was, of course, William Stafford's mother, um, would also be killed in the explosion. So not a good idea if you're concerned about your family. Now, while this plot was ongoing, um, William Stafford uh, reported it to Sir Francis Walsingham, who was Queen Elizabeth I's uh, spymaster and her principal secretary. 
De Trapp was then arrested and the French ambassador Chateauneuf was questioned about, uh, you know, why on earth uh, he hadn't uh, reported um, this plot to uh, the English government, the English authorities. He couldn't explain why he hadn't reported the plot, but he threw all the blame on William Stafford. Um, Stafford was then imprisoned in the Tower of London, but strangely, he was released without charge, even though he was apparently, uh, you know, the main conspirator in a plot to kill the Queen. He was released without charge in August 1588. How and why did William Stafford escape punishment if he'd been so involved in this plot that it was named after him? What do you think? Well, it's actually believed that the plot was orchestrated by Sir Francis Walsingham and William Cecil, the Queen's chief advisor, to prove to Queen Elizabeth I that her life was in danger, that there were going to be plots and plots and plots against her until she did something decisive. Uh, with Mary, Queen of Scots, that this, uh, that William Stafford had been chosen as someone to uh, sort of plot with the French, this pretend plot, uh, Stafford was just the kind of agent provocateur, um, and it was a fake plot, it was never meant to go ahead, and it just was to persuade uh, Elizabeth to act against Mary, Queen of Scots, i.e. execute Mary, Queen of Scots. Um, another theory is that the plot was used to put the French ambassador under house arrest at the time of Mary's execution, Mary Queen of Scots' execution, to stop the French doing anything about it, to stop uh, French protests um, against it. You know, he wouldn't be able to inform his master over, you know, what was going on in England if he was sort of under house arrest. So interesting theories. I think I go for the former one. I think um, Walsingham and Sissel uh, using Stafford to uh, in a fake plot. Um, I think that one kind of makes sense. Now, in 1593, following his release from the Tower of London, William Stafford married Anne Grime and the couple settled down to a quiet life away from court in Norfolk. And they had two children, Dorothy and William, who obviously were named after William's uh, parents. See, they're not very creative, are they? Their son, William, became an author and pamphleteer. Stafford died a natural death on this day in 1612. And it seems a very uh, quiet end for a man who worked for a Queen's spy master and who ended up being imprisoned in the tower as a result. So there you go, a man that not many people know about, but uh, a fascinating man who ended up being uh, in a plot against the Queen. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live. And you can, of course, give me a like and leave comments too. Uh, I try and read as many comments as I can. And I really appreciate uh, the interaction and the feedback that I get from you. I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.